It's now time for the sponsor perspective portion of the program. A quick note, while I'm conducting this next interview and the questions are really mine, this portion of the program shouldn't be considered editorial. I spoke with Jason Fisher, who's chief engineer of the autonomous vehicles at General Motors. I'm really a geek on this stuff and I get a little geeky. I think it's fun to listen to. Uh, take a listen. Jason, it's so great to be with you. I am a wannabe tech geek. I think if I were to have another life path, I would sort of want to be you, a chief technology officer. I don't have those skills. So what I do is I rent a lot of cars out there and I uh, go out and I, I find myself renting occasionally GM cars, in fact. Um, and I have been experiencing many of the dimensions of autonomy that you have been engaged in and creating. So I am a direct beneficiary of a lot of your work. So why don't you share with us a little bit of GM's own path to autonomy? Yeah, thanks. And we're happy to excite you as well as the rest of the industry. So we believe that GM's pursuing, um, you know, the most comprehensive path to autonomy. And we're really accelerating our efforts. When you look at what General Motors did in 2017, we introduced Super Cruise. Super Cruise is one of the world's first hands-free driving assistance technologies. And next year, we're going to be expanding that into Ultra Cruise. And Ultra Cruise is going to really allow the customer to experience about 95% of those driving scenarios will be hands-free driving. Mm -hmm. The combination of those two technologies or those two systems really allow GM to get to a price point that we feel will be beneficial and extend that into different vehicle segments. And then in parallel, when you look at what we're doing with cruise automation, the path to full autonomy, they're making significant progress um, every day when you look at what happened last year. They're also making progress, not only in the, um, the, the ride hail business, but also in the delivery system of business. So when we take this approach together, this comprehensive approach, we believe that we can uh, achieve economies of scale. We can drive the price point down so it's affordable for everybody. And we can accumulate a level of expertise across these systems that will allow us not only to reach um, you know, the commercial business, but also the retail business. Well, when I'm driving down the freeway, and this is the first time I experienced it, you kind of feel that resistance uh, to going across a lane without without you know turning on the signal, which is a very a very good kind of instructor for me because I'm you know pretty bad at that sometimes. Or if you're driving, I said, "Wow, this is pretty awesome," and I'm in my lane uh, and I take my hands off the wheel for a second because I'm feeling a confident. I, I, you know, I have, there's like a little nanny in there that says, put your hand back on there, you know, like, so, so tell us what the state of hands-free driving is. And, you know, I, I want our, our viewers to kind of get a feel for it if they haven't experienced what I have, because it's very different than my 2001 GMC Sonoma truck. Yeah. When you look at the, the current state of hands-free driving, it really goes down to, um, to two different areas. Super Cruise, Super Cruise really allows the customer to uh, experience a hand-free driving experience, as you described, for about 200,000 uh, miles across the United States and Canada. It's, it's really helping GM redefine vehicle ownership and how the, the, the customer interacts with the vehicle. It also allows GM to expand our revenue based on software-enabled services and, and uh, experiences. Quite frankly, people love it. Our Cadillac CT6 customers, about 85% of them are telling us that they uh, wouldn't consider a vehicle without or almost demanding that the vehicle has super cruise in it to allow them that driver th free assistance ability. Uh, cruise. Cruise is also conducting, um, you know, driverless rides in San Francisco uh, to the public. It's happening today as we speak. And Cruise, is, cruise Automation is the only company that's allowed to do so in the this, in this uh, city of San Francisco. Well, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about Cruise because for me, honestly, it's a new brand and I'm glad uh, that that we're you know working with you and that 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 you folks have supported these conversations today. It's a fascinating uh, journey into kind of the next generation of transportation. But tell us more about the story of Cruise, which is a subsidiary of GM. What makes it unique? What what how how, do you, how is it going to stand out in a crowded marketplace of other EVs? Yeah, Cru Cruise is making tremendous progress. Um, you know, they're only one permit away from being able to provide a, a, a driverless ride at a fee. So they're, they're right up against the commercial launch. I think what separates Cruise uh, from other companies is the deep integration that they have with General Motors. We are designing vehicles from the ground up and you can see that when you look at the next generation, the Cruise Origin, that vehicle is a purposely built shared ride usage vehicle. It is all electric. It can be used for ride hail and it can be used for deliveries. And we expect that Cruise is gonna be the first uh, company really to enable a large scale commercial autonomous experience for both ride share and for delivery services. So take us a step further, take us a few years down the road where 
the the you know we've got many more of these vehicles and systems on the road and and mm -hmm. and cruises out there what are going to be the benefits of this autonomy this autonomous world uh to your consumers and I guess the, the one little twist I want to put in it, is it, is it just in the commercial retail car area and the ride share? Is it also going to be in trucks? Are we going to see it in other systems out there? How autonomous is our world going to become? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the vision is that um, we're going to expand our technologies to a wide variety of uh, vehicle segments, including trucks, including, um, you know, put, put personally autonomous owned vehicles uh, as well. So combined with GM's vision for an all electric future, um, autonomous vehicles um, are really getting at the essence of General Motors' zero, zero, zero mission, which is zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. We expect autonomous vehicles are going to provide a tremendous safety ben benefit to, to society. Uh, autonomous vehicles are never distracted. Autonomous vehicles don't have impaired drivers. And when you look at uh, human-driven human, human uh, vehicles, they are fairly inefficient at sitting, um, you know, in the garage or in a parking space for about 95% of the day. So some of the benefits that we get are allowing a customer base to use a vehicle 95% of the day, not just 5% of the day. And that unlocks a, a significant revenue stream for our customers. In addition to an environmental impact for every one vehicle, there's about three parking spaces. And as we reduce that congestion and we keep vehicles out on the road instead of sitting in parking spots, we can have a tremendous environmental impact and give green space back to communities where they desperately need it. Let me just ask you this finally. I mean, I'd love to ask you what you dream about because you know you're one of these CTO types that you know you're 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 dreaming about about fixing problems. But mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we're at a point with cars, with vehicles, where we were once with phones, where our phone is not a phone anymore. It's a computer. It's a camera. It's a database. It's a, you know, connectivity. It's, you know, you know, it's a, our interaction with the internet and, and whether or not we're getting to that point, we're actually calling a car, a car is a misnomer. Uh, I just love to get your, your take on that. Yeah. My take on that is we're selling an experience. When you look at what General Motors is doing, we're selling experiences to people and we're really giving people something that I value very much in my life. And that's time. You know, when you look at the future of autonomy, what can I give back to society? What can I give back to community? I can give people their time back, right? They will have the ability to um, do things that they normally wouldn't be able to do if they had to continually uh, put their hands on the wheel and pay attention to, to driving. You give people that, that ability to use their time more wisely in the day where they, they otherwise would have been driving a vehicle. So it's experience and it's giving the gift of time back. Well, I love this conversation. You know, I was going to sort of, you know, actually wiggle my way into kind of getting a ride with you somewhere, but I just realized you may not have the hands on the wheel. I got to figure out if I'm going to, you know, how, how that's going to go. But I think it'll be a lot of fun. But I want to thank Jason Fisher, Chief Engineer Autonomous Vehicles uh, at GM and, and responsible as well for Cruise. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks a lot for having me. And thanks a lot for allowing us to share our journey to autonomy. Mm -hmm.